People, including me, have made a lot of hay about the fact that Tesla has removed 300,000 lines of code to get the full end-to-end -end neural network with full self-driving 12, but I think people are actually underestimating the amount of code that's been removed because it's actually way more than that. Plus, Europe is finally going to get access to full self-driving beta, but there are some catches to that, and Tesla has reintroduced the transfer of full self-driving from one car to another. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. First of all, coming to you from a new studio, which is just 90 degrees from my old studio. This is thanks to Misinformation, who had some ideas. There's gonna be some more tweaks on this in the coming days and weeks. Uh, amongst the biggest of them is there's gonna be a lot of soundproofing around. There's a lot of uh, echo right now, which I can hear myself as I'm talking. So that will get knocked down to some extent and we'll get probably some other lighting and things like that. But hopefully you like this. A little bit cleaner and more purposeful. And if you're wondering why I'm back in my studio, I will explain that at the end. I don't want to take up time in the middle of the video. Anyway, I'm going to start with Tesla full self-driving transfer to U.S. customers. Uh, we took advantage of this back in September where they had it before. It was not available through the end of the year, and now it's being reintroduced by Tesla. Coming soon, full self-driving transfer for U.S. customers. Great news. We have heard our customers' feedback and are working to relaunch full self-driving transfers in the U.S. as soon as possible. Gather information for any inquiring customers and ensure they know we are actively working on a solution so they can take advantage of transferring their FSD to a new model sexy if they take delivery by March 31st, 2024. Details to follow. So first of all, the way this reads, it sounds like an internal memo. I'm not exactly sure where it was leaked. It is not publicly available as far as I know, but it should be pretty soon. And second of all, interestingly enough, there's no Model 3 involved in this, so I don't know if that's because they're doing the retool and they don't expect to have Model 3s available for sale this quarter or what. I, I don't know. Very weird that they don't have the 3 involved in that, but that is what I've got from this leaked piece of information from Tesla. And of course, finally, the question, which actually my wife, Misinformation, asked me last night. She was like, hey, why don't they just make this permanent and just allow people to transfer this because they should be able to do that? I think Tesla does this right now on a time-limited basis to try to goose sales. It got us to purchase a car. If it had been like, yeah, yeah, we'll let you do this forever, we wouldn't have purchased a new car back in September. So I think they use it to goose sales when they want to. But overall, I do agree with my wife. They should actually just make this permanent. This is something that you should be able to transfer at least once or twice in your lifetime of owning the vehicle. It's very expensive to purchase, and I think they should do right by their best customers, who are the people who have purchased full self-driving beta. I just turned 59, 59, and 18 months ago, I was feeling terrible. I was getting a spare tire around my middle, my joints were aching, and I was fatigued all the time. But after a year and a half of cutting out sugar and drinking AG1 daily, I can honestly say I feel years younger. I've lost weight, my joints don't ache, and I have so much more energy than I did before. AG1 is foundational nutrition that provides your body with what you might be missing during the winter months and all year long. AG1 is a science-driven formulation with 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens. AG1 gives you the foundational nutrition your body craves, and the probiotics and prebiotics help my digestive system stay regular no matter what I throw at it. I really enjoy savoring AG1 now since it's sweet without any added sugar, and I can sip it while working out. As you can see here, I love taking AG1 to the climbing gym and drinking it between climbs. I've really noticed how much AG1 AG1 has helped me reach my fitness goals. It's one daily routine I won't change. Go to drinkag1.com slash Dr. Know It All to get your free welcome kit that includes the canister, shaker, a year's supply of vitamins D3 and K2, and five extra travel packs of AG1. Thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video and thank you for watching. Be sure to click my link to get your free welcome kit and now let's get back to it. Next up, big news for the EU. The proposal for amendments to ECE Trans WP.29 GRVA 2024 2 towards the end of January were actually approved. This is a very dry 70 page document. This is a proposal finally approved after multiple years at the end of January of 2024. It's a big deal because it will allow the EU drivers of Teslas and other vehicles to finally take advantage of full self driving beta, although it's not going to be able to. Call, be called full self-driving beta because they're going to have to rename it. 
something in the EU to indicate it's an advanced driver assistance system rather than a complete autopilot solution. Now, I'm not interested in reading 70 pages of very, very dry information. So fortunately, Stephen Peters here has a video, of course, I will leave a link to this in the description, where he goes through everything. It's a, called a driver control assistance system or DCAS, and that is, again, not full self-driving. He goes through a lot of the caveats, including the fact that the NAG in Europe, my gosh, I thought it was bad in the United States now, it sounds like you're going to get about five to eight seconds as you're driving between steering wheel nags and between eye blinking and 200 milliseconds to look around at things. It's just, it's insane the level of control that Europe is putting on this thing. Ultimately, it's going to restrict the ability of full self-driving to move out of this beta state into a more robust state where it can actually take over more and more of the driving capabilities because regulations are always in retrospect, not because regulations are always in retrospect, not in prospect. In other words, they don't deal with the future. They only deal with the past. And so this, while it's really, really nice, you guys are going to get it and you're going to get it a year from now. It looks like it, I think it's the day of the actual approval. So it's going to be the end of January of 2025 before you can actually have access to this. At that point, of course, it'll be full self-driving version 12 dot something. But when you get it, it's going to be more restrictive than in the United States and other countries, and it won't be able to grow. Let's say that, you know, amazingly enough, full self-driving 12 by January of 2025 is completely able to do autonomous drives in the United States without any, you know, intervention of the driver. And so U.S. regulators have gone, and Canadian regulators and maybe Chinese these regulators, who knows, but other countries or even cities or states have said, yeah, 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 you can use this completely autonomously and not have the human involved in the driving decision. This regulation is going to allow people to utilize it like we do today, but it won't be able to deal with that kind of development. They'll have to have a whole new regulation. It'll take another five years. So Europe is really shooting themselves in the foot with over-regulating things too much and not allowing the evolution of technology to happen as rapidly as it should. Yes, they need to protect the public. And yes, people argue that the United States is not good enough at that. But I would argue that it's better to deal with this technology in a prospective way, in other words, looking towards the future, rather than in a retrospective way and say, this is what it looked like a year ago, so we're going to deal with it like that. This, this technology moves too quickly. So anyway, congratulations to the EU for getting this at all. It's amazing. It took four and a half years, plus an extra year for it to be implemented, which is just insane. But the insanity is that this is really not going to help you out that much, because by 2025, we could be very, very close to fully autonomous driving in the United States. States, which means you're still going to be years and years behind us. All right, so on from Europe back to the United States and Canada, FSD beta version 12.1. These are the release notes. They kind of screwed me because I love doing the release notes, but there was no purpose because this was it. Full self-driving beta version 12 upgrades the city streets driving stack to a single end-to-end -end neural network trained on millions of video clips, replacing over 300,000 lines of explicit C++ code. So first of all, I have to say a little bit of mea culpa because if this is actually correct, this idea idea here is this is a single end-to-end -end network. I thought that they were doing a bunch of little networks that were all sort of glued together. According to this, it's one end-to-end -end network. So they're looking at something that is just one monolithic network. That seems a little bit insane because that means every time they want to make a change, they have to go back and retrain the whole thing. But maybe the network is not as big as I think it is. And so it can train more quickly. Elon had said they were compute constrained back in August. So this could explain some of the reason why, or maybe this is not completely, completely accurate and there are ways of freezing the individual parts of the neural network. But either way, it sounds like it really is kind of a monolithic network that they're dealing with. Photons in, control output out. But this is what I really want to talk about. Replacing over 300,000 lines of explicit C++ code. People are like, wow, that's amazing. They've replaced 300,000 lines of C++ code to create this. My understanding of this is it's a lot more than that. So in order to look at this more carefully, I'm going to scroll back to August 1st of 2023. Robert Scoble, who, awesome, hey Robert, uh, you know, he talks about Tesla's AI is the most amazing software of my life. And by the way, he really loves the Vision Pro. And I did a review of that. If you haven't seen that review, I will leave a link up here and also at the end of the video. I highly recommend watching it. I think it's a, a good and balanced review. It's definitely a 1.0 piece of hardware and software. The software will be upgraded over time, obviously. We'll see what happens with the hardware. But in response to this, Elon Musk replied, via 
vehicle control is the final piece of the Tesla FSD AI puzzle that will drop over 300,000 lines of C++ control code by about two orders of magnitude. It is training as I write this. Our progress is currently training compute constrained, not engineer constrained. So first of all, compute constrained, they, Tesla is creating more and more and more compute as, as I speak, you know, basically. They're actually on track to become one of the largest compute clusters, the most amount of flops in, in the world, I think in the top five or something like that. So they're on track to become that because they are so compute constrained. But what I want to talk about specifically is this line that will drop greater than 300,000 lines of C++ control code by approximately two orders of magnitude. So first of all, people are like, look, they've done 300,000 lines of code down to neural network architecture. My argument is it's a couple of orders of magnitude greater than that. It's not 300,000 lines of code over time. It's probably on the order of, you know, 3 million, 30 million lines of code, something along those lines. And so this replacement of software 1.0 of hard coding with neural network stacks is a much, much bigger achievement than I think people are giving credit to. They're thinking 300,000 lines of code down to something, and, and people are saying 3,000 lines of code. I think reading this that it's it's not quite that either. So the first thing I wanna talk about is, is software 1.0. That's what we're used to. That's hard coding, it's heuristics, it's if this, then that, that kind of a thing, C++ control code. This would have been the kind of stuff that Tesla would have started with in 2015, 2016, when they split from Mobileye and started off on their own. They started working with software 1.0. Andre Karpathy has famously, you know, published pictures of this where software 2.0 is eating software 1.0. And what's happening is you're replacing that heuristics, all of that kind of code with neural networks and with behavior that's learned from data. It looks at videos, it looks at sample driving, all of that kind of stuff. And it trains the neural network to become good at driving. And what they've done is they've replaced pieces of it, starting with the vision stack, starting with understanding the world, what is the world like, how is it all working, all of that kind of stuff. They moved that into neural networks, then they moved sort of the midterm element of it, the, the planning and all of that, and then finally they moved the controls into the neural network stack rather than explicit coding. And it's this final step, you know, the one, two, three, the control output part that if I'm reading this correctly, that is a reduction of 300,000 lines of code. So it's not the whole stack, you might think of that as maybe three times or even even 10 times plus the amount of code that they had originally to do all of this stuff. So we're probably looking at on the order of three to 30 million lines of code, not 300,000 lines of code. It is a lot more than people are giving credit for. So replacing all of this with the neural network, no matter how big that is, is a huge achievement. But then let's look at the last part of this sentence. And I may be you know, too closely reading this, but Elon Musk is pretty precise with his words. By approximately two orders of magnitude, Magnitude. So what people are interpreting this as is you're going from 300,000 lines of code to 3,000 lines of C++ code. What I'm reading this as is that we're dropping it from however much space 300,000 lines of C++ code is to two orders of magnitude less than that in terms of like Python code or something like that, that is controlling the neural network stacks. So it's not that there's C++ code in the stack anymore, it's that all of that has been replaced by a small amount of Python code, which is controlling these, these databases essentially. It's just a big spreadsheet of numbers, it's the weights. So you get the photons in and it multiplies by all of these crazy numbers and stuff like that and out pops a decision to turn the wheel to the right or press the brakes or something along those lines. So what we're looking at is a complete overhaul. It's not a reduction. You're not taking all of this code and shrinking it down. You're just taking all of that code and you're throwing it away and replacing it by something that's approximately two orders of magnitude smaller. So if we think about the entire stack as opposed to just this part, and we think about it as somewhere around 10 or 100 times larger than what we're talking about for this, we're looking at a reduction of 3 million or 30 million lines of code. Just call it 10 million lines of code just for round numbers. I don't, you know, I don't have inside information about this, but you're looking at reducing 10 million lines of code to somewhere on the order of 100,000 lines of code equivalent, but that would be in a neural network, and it actually might be even larger than that. Neural networks, you know, the, the, the code for it is super, super small. You can just do that. It could be on the order of 1,000 lines of Python code or something like that. Now, probably a bit more than that because this is a pretty advanced stack, but most of what's going on is, is the data acquisition and the 
training of all those CSV files. Now those are gonna be fairly large. They could be multiple gigabytes worth of data, but the actual code to control it can be very, very small. So we could be looking at on the order of 1,000 or 10,000 lines of Python code that is controlling all of this stuff. And that's where you can really start to see the advantage of what's going on. Now, when I say Python code, I mean that would probably be the top level. It might be rewritten in C directly, but a lot of Python actually runs in C because it's much, much faster that way. So anyway, take Python with a grain of salt. I think that they use PyTorch. I'm pretty sure that they use PyTorch, which is a Python-based version of neural networks. They might rewrite that stuff explicitly to be in C so it would run faster, or they might just be using the internal inbuilt stuff that converts Python to C as it's compiled. But regardless, we're looking at a much, much smaller code base, like many orders of magnitude smaller than the original, and it's a much bigger reduction than 300,000 lines of code to 3,000 lines of code. It's on the order of three you know, to 10 or so million lines of code down to something much, much smaller. And that's going to allow the, the whole system to run much more efficiently. When you look at them going like, yeah, we're able to run basically at the frame rate of the cameras, even on hardware three, which is ancient hardware at this point, that means this is so much more efficient than the old version because it just doesn't have to run through as much code as it used to. That is pretty darn amazing. And then you add on top of that, the fact that the inference version of this software, which is the stuff that actually gets downloaded to your car, is going to be quantized to very, very small. I think it's eight bit float now, or maybe it's 16. But anyway, it's really, really small. It's very, very efficient. So it fits into the memory of your car's FSD board and it can run even faster because it's doing much, much lower bandwidth calculations. So all of that is just amazing and it's going to cause the software to operate much more quickly. The downside of this is that you might have to retrain the network every single time all the way through. I hope if it is really truly monolithic that they have ways of freezing different parts of the neural network stack so effectively they can just retrain parts of it. But anyway, you know, it is going to be expensive in terms of time to recompute, recalculate all this stuff, do the quality assurance checking, all of that. So we may see the, the version 12 dot whatever versions roll out more slowly than we're used to, which is already pretty slow at this point. And as we've seen from Holmar's catalogs drives there are some really amazing stuff but he also says there are many more safety critical interventions than there were with version 11 of the software so you know it's still relatively new and the problem with revisions of this is if they really do have to retrain the entire stack every single time that's going to take a very very long time to retrain it and then to go through all of those steps so we will see how that goes and we'll see how fast the rollout happens but hopefully you know version 12.2 or whatever of this software will roll out to a lot more people than just just a very, very chosen few who get to drive it right now. But anyway, the overall takeaway of this is if you think that they've replaced 300,000 lines of C++ code with 3,000 lines of C++ code, it's not that. They've replaced much, much more code with much, much less Python slash neural network slash C code or something along those lines. It's a much bigger deal than you think. And I thought that was worth calling out. Okay, so that's what I've got for today. If you wanna leave right now, that's fine. Personal story wise, why am I back home? My dad, as you may have known from my previous videos, is, you know, he's in hospice. He's in the process of passing away. It is taking, unfortunately, it's just it's just a waiting game at this point. There's nothing else to say for it. So it could take days or weeks. I will be back there at some point in the relatively near future. I don't know exactly when. But in the meantime, there were things I just had to deal with at home, including some contractors and stuff who are coming in to fix our basement from the flood that we had last summer. So there were just a lot of things that were going on that I had to come back home for a period of time. So I'll be back here, then I'll be back there, then I'll be back here again. So that's what's going on. Anyway, thank you so much for your patience, but I wanted to let you all know why I'm back here at least temporarily. Anyway, that's what I've got for you today. Please be sure to like and subscribe so other people can find this video. And again, a big thanks to AG1 for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description to get your free welcome kit, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.